Should you invest in uptown, midtown, or downtown condos? Where is the best place to invest in Toronto condos? Is it downtown Toronto? Is it midtown Toronto? Is it uptown Toronto? This is Yossi Kaplan, Toronto Real Estate Agent Mortgage Broker with Search Realty Search Mortgage. And today, I'm gonna shed some light on where's the best investment. So it goes like this. In the old days, <laughs> um, there was only downtown, okay? This King Street right here, all the buildings are boarded up. Oh my God, all the, <laughs> downtown. All the buildings are boarded up, there was nothing going on. Actually, if you went west of Bathurst, it was like the end of the world. Nobody would even go west of Spadina. Everything was boarded up and then uh, Allied came and fixed uh, King Street and Fried came and, and uh, built all the building and, and you know the rest. It's like everyone want to be here and it's like the new restaurant row. Uh, three or four beautiful restaurants opening here and the prices are going like crazy. So what happens is when the prices go up so much, um, the carrying costs are going up of course. Uh, the condo fees are the same, but the taxes will go up and the, uh, municipal ta the municipal taxes will go up, the mortgage will go up. And it generates a lot of pressure on rents to come up because the landlords, the owners, the investors, they need to at least break even an investment. Otherwise, what's the point of investing in the condo, right? So uh, this condo is here, you know, those little 450 square footers where you can see here uh, at the Thompson residences, they're selling for 260 to 280. And now they doubled when they came out, right? In the opening night, and uh, now they doubled, and you know, 500 to 600 uh, per. That's a 450 square feet unit in there. Um, okay, so what's going on? So the price going up here. So then developers are starting to look for uh, cheaper options for them to develop and to keep their margins because developers are here. Uh, it's a business, so they're gonna go and find cheaper land to buy and places where it's cheaper to build. So those are out of the core. So now they start moving out of the core, so they move to Midtown. What's Midtown? I used to call Midtown Bloor. And I go, oh my God, going north of Bloor, are you crazy? Like that was too far for me. But now Midtown is really St. Clair, Eglinton. That's, that's proper Toronto Midtown. Um, and that area is serviced very, very well. I mean, it's actually, it's a very nice area to live. There's a low crime rate, uh, high visibility, a lot of great people working, living there, and, and quite a few uh, uh, more houses, old houses, and less condos. So any condo that you bring to Midtown, um, and those started to come up at like five and $600 a foot. And now, of course, they, they caught up and, and they kind of even out with the downtown at a thousand or even slightly more a foot for the resale. And once that becomes expensive, then we look at uh, Uptown. Okay, so Uptown is, uh, you know, if you can smell the 401, you're uptown. And uh, some people call uptown Richmond Hill because they are, I live uptown, where's that? Richmond Hill, Markham. And that's okay too, that's uptown too. Um, <clears throat> but you know, I don't go much further north than the 401. There's so much area one person can cover. So we'll say that uptown for this, uh, the sake of this video, uptown will be like around the 401, okay? Um, north of Eglinton for sure. So now those condos come at a discount and now you got a three tier system where the downtown is the most expensive. And now if you want to buy anything downtown, you know, King West just over there, um, those are selling now at 1,600 to 2,000 a foot for the pen regular unit. I don't think you can even find for 1,600 anymore. Uh, maybe 1,800 a foot and the penthouse is maybe 2,000 a foot, about that price. Um, 543 Richmond, I highly recommended you buy that. That was selling at about 1200. Can't find anything like that. Rush sold about 13, 1400 a foot. Uh, anything you're gonna find in this area now, the King West, you're looking at 14, 15, 1600 a foot. Okay, and um, the Midtown, you should be able to find, say in the, in the mid, in the mid, and then you, want, you like to see the uptown at a thousand. And that's more or less what's happening, you know, give or take. Um, so where should you invest? So it goes like this. Um, some investors, especially those who come from other countries like myself, and those who come from a large, dense, populated area, which is uh, Hong Kong, large cities in China, you know, even Tel Aviv, where I grew up, it's very dense, very populated, and the prices are more expensive than Toronto, actually, or New York, or San Francisco, or Frankfurt, any, any of these large towns. Their prices are higher than ours, and of course, uh, once you uh, flip it all US dollars, you realize that we're still cheap globally, but locally we're not. 
because it's expensive because of how much money we make, you know, the, the average uh, salaries and all that. So <clears throat> if I invest, uh, uh, the people that still invest in downtown, they, use, they tend to be coming from other downtowns which are very busy and they see what's going on in their home countries and ho their, their hometowns where you just want to buy as close as you can to the core. And that's what's happening. That's why you see uh, Young Street and Bay Street, all these massive towers, you know, 60 and 80 stories, and they're going for crazy, crazy amount. Now, of course, Toronto has only two subway lines. It's lame, lame, lame. Uh, one goes up and down, uh, uh, university, Young University, and Young want to go across the Blue Danforth. So we do need way more subway lines, of course, but that's politics, and no politician wants to be the one that spends the money, so we never get it. <laughs> That's a problem with our system, uh, but that's a whole other video. Um, so if you want to be close to the core, now you're going to pay more and more and more. And then your carrying costs are going to be more and more and more. And the rents that you're, you're going to have to get are more and more and more, or you're going to have to flip it to someone else for more and more and more. Is it even, is it even possible? Now, if you look at Midtown, okay, so we started selling 150, 155 Red Path, the Neon Condos, all those, they're about 600, 600 bucks a foot, okay? And now you can easily get a thousand bucket foot for the resale, and any new building that will come there, I think easily will get a thousand to twelve hundred a foot. And then if you look at the uptown like Nordic, which I've been uh, talking a lot about, and whomever called me and uh, and made their calls and put the worksheets, congratulations if you got one. Uh, it's just going crazy there, and it's selling very very fast, and they will raise prices. You know that's how it works. You sell a bunch of units, you raise the prices. Sell a bunch more, you raise the price. So if you're an investor that um, you're ready to go and you want to put you want to put your paw on something you want to invest in something then you got to make a move quick because there's a lot of other people thinking just like you and they are ready you know you gotta hunt or be or be hunted you gotta hunt so if you first to rise you know you get the worm you get the best uh, you get the best stuff and if you're slow or you're not ready or you just can't do it for you know it's not it doesn't mean it's your fault it's like you're not there on time then you may have to pay a little more for the same unit, but you, maybe you can still get in. But once you don't get in, that building sold, the next building next door, which could be the same developer or another developer, will look at the stats and say, oh, you know, let's say Nordic uh, eventually got 1,100 foot average, so why don't I start my building at 1,100 foot and bring my, and bring my building to an average of 1,200 foot. So that's how it goes. So the question is, should you buy uh, should you spend, say, $1,600 a foot downtown, uh, $13, $14, say $13.50 a foot midtown, or $1,000 uptown, just, just to make it easy. So um, a 500 square foot unit at $1,000 a foot, that's easy, that's $500,000, okay? So that's one unit. And those units on average will cost, uh, say, about $2,500 a month, okay? So for, to get $2,500 a month in rent, it's not going to be one bedroom uptown. You've got to squeeze two bedroom in there, one plus den, so two people can share, okay? Uh, maybe. Now, if you look at a 13.50 a foot, now your cost uh, is 150 uh, dollar a foot more times 500. So you're looking at a uh, purchase price of about 640,000, 650,000 dollars a foot, and that's the net price without the closing cost, land transfer, all that stuff. Okay. Now you're looking at about close to 3,000, about 3,000 a month carrying costs, uh, which means you have to you have to get 3,000 a month to break even. On your investment mind you all these carrying costs and break-even costs they include the, the payback into the capital okay but that's how we calculate and then if you bought the unit at 1650 a foot or something like that your purchase price is about 800,000 for 500 square feet 850,000 for 500 square feet now you need about four thousand dollars a month to cover the rent now I'll, I'll make another video with the Kaplan condo calculator showing you exactly how to get, how I got there uh, but I'm just telling you because I just did the numbers and, and I'm just going to report it for this video. So $2,500 uh, $2, a foot, uh, $2,500 a month for the 500 square feet. Uh, if you bought 1000 a foot, about 3000 say add another 500 bucks a month. Uh, if you pay 1350 a foot and about 4000 a month if you paid uh, 1600 or so a foot. So between the it's the same unit, different location, different price. The difference in carrying costs in the rent you need to get to break even could be fifteen hundred a month or eighteen thousand a year. Is it worth it? So, first of all, you got to look. Do you think you can get that kind of rent? So a lot of people say, yeah, I'll get the rents or I'll furnish it. 
or whatever. You know, a lot of people have very specific ideas how they can do it. I don't like specific ideas because what if you have a great idea but other people don't think it's that great. You just don't get that buyer. You just don't get that renter. Oh yeah, and, and <laughs> you're buying a building, there's at least 400 other units, 500 other units, and there's probably at least 20 or 30 or 50 or 100 units, just like the one you want, especially because the one plus 10, 500 square feet is such a common unit. Then comes the thing about the unit design, which I told you so many times that the long and narrow units with the kitchen on the side where you don't have a living room, those are not good units. People, the moment they walk in there, they become very problematic to sell and very problematic to rent. So if someone will buy it or rent it from you, they're not going to want to pay you full price. So they're squeezing your margins. So you have to make sure you, you pay a price that will allow you um, to carry the unit or to sell it or to flip it or to assign it to someone else who would see the value just like you have. So you got to make sure the value is there. A lot of people these days, and now I'm going to give it to you just straight up, a lot of people these days do not think that way. They do not think, they just grab the unit because they want to own something and the price is going up. That's very good, but it's not enough because you have to buy the right unit. And if you cannot find the right unit, do not buy the inside corner unit at that kind of price because you just can't break even on it. And it's very, very hard to sell or even to rent an inside corner unit with a tiny little window. It's just too dark. People walk in, they go, I don't want, I don't want to be here. Okay? So don't buy those units. If, if you cannot find a good enough unit that you think makes sense for someone to live there or makes sense for someone to buy it off you, whether they, they're going to live there because they buy from you or they rent it from you, just find another unit. Okay? There's, there's lots of units. You can do it. I'll help you. So <clears throat> the prices in downtown has always gone up farther and faster than other areas. And the midtown, um, you know, it's somewhere in the middle and in the cheap areas, maybe the least. But what's happening now is because the price discrepancy is so high. The gap is so unbelievable. You know, you can find 40%, 50% gap in price between similar unit at different areas. And this is the all 416. I'm not talking here. I'm not going to Hamilton here. I'm saying in Toronto. Um, that you got, you got to scratch your head and think to yourself, does it make any sense anymore? Um, so if I have a unit that I bought 500 square feet at $800,000 and I need 4,000, first of all, I need, you know, 20% down. So 20% of uh, 800,000 is $160,000 in carrying costs. Ah, you know, close to $200,000 to put down on the unit. And then you need about 4,000 a month to carry it. Can you find someone who will pay you 4,000 a month? That's pretty high. Um, that's, you know, $120 a night, $130 a night. It, it's, you're getting close to the Airbnb here. So, oh, I'll furnish the unit and I'll rent it. Well, if, it's a, if you plan to do it on Airbnb and your building does not have any condo rules in the strata that you're allowed to rent a short term, by default, most of these condos are six months. So you may be able to do it for a bit, but then the condo board sooner or later will stop you. Okay, because you're not supposed to do it because now it's a commercial, you're running a commercial business out of the condo. And then, of course, the CRA, the Canada Revenue Agency, can say, well, you're running a hotel here, so you might as well pay us taxes you pay business. Or they say, or if that's, you know, all kinds of things. Like they're going to come after you for all kinds of taxes. So you got to watch out for these things. Now, what about getting the rent? Can you get 4000 a month? Well, how do I get 4000 a month for 500 square feet? So I need to rent it or it has to be a very unique, uh, very, very unique uh, place. Or maybe like 488 University, I think that building, you will get 400, uh, 4,000 and 5,000 a month because um, it's a very rich area. Doctors, surgeons, lawyers, accountants, uh, finance types, all these, all these guys and ladies, when I say guys, I just mean people, um, all these people, they need a place to live. And if they're making 200,000 a year or 500,000 a year or a couple million a year, it's okay. They just need a place to crash and they don't really care if it costs 5,000 a month or 6,000 a month. But remember, the top of the pyramid is narrow, it's thin. So you gotta be careful. You gotta be, you gotta really, really think where you're picking up that unit, okay? Okay, so now, if you're looking for the mid-range unit, the 1350, which costs you about 640,000 and you need 3,000 a month to break even, it's got to have a two bedroom. If you, cannot, if you cannot put two beds in there, you know, if you cannot put two beds at 4,000 a month or 3,000 a month uh, at, uh, say, Young and Eglinton, 
I think you'll be hard pressed in today's economy to find that kind of rent. That's could, that could be hard pressed. This is the Dasha restaurant, by the way. So apparently it's Asian. Looks great. <laughs> Toronto is, is so many new restaurants in the area. Um, but you know, if, if, if you're gonna go at the 3,000 a month, then you're gonna need to find two people sharing. Could be two roommates, could be a couple, could be uh, someone with a baby, uh, someone who runs in a home office and doesn't mind the rent because they don't want to rent an office. But you narrow, you start to narrow down your possibilities. They're a little bit more open than the four thousand a month, but they're a little more narrow. And of course, if you buy a unit uptown, it'll be easier maybe to find someone at two thousand dollars. But if you go too far out then you're going into a lower income level area where they, they will not pay you 2000 a month. So, so it's a conundrum, it's, it's a serious problem. Now, I said this is all about Toronto, but if I, if I did mention Hamilton, that's why Hamilton, you see 500, 600, 700 dollar foot, because it still allows for the people of the area, for the, for the salaries of the area to still afford living in a new condo. That's why we're and that's why the spillover, that's why it's starting to grow. So let's summarize this. I'll make another video with all the numbers with the condo calculator, the spreadsheet that I should, I've been showing you. Um, when you buy a high ticket item, 500 square feet, a very, very high price, it's got to have everything and you have to be sure that someone can rent it from you or you can carry it, okay? Let alone, if you're thinking of flipping that thing, if you're flipping that thing, who's going to buy a 500 square feet unit uh, from you and will give you, you know, at least $800,000 plus your selling costs plus your profit? You want to make at least 100 grand. That's not even that much. You know, we used to double our deposits here at real estate. If I want to double my deposit, which is 20% of 800, which is 160, so 800 plus 160, 960 plus uh, tax, da, 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 a million bucks. So who wants to spend a million dollars, 500 square feet unit, $2,000 a foot unit, 500 square feet? How do I find a buyer for that? And how many of these buyers can I find? And how many of these kind of units the market can absorb in Toronto, even downtown? Okay. Do you think that anyone will pay $1 million for 500 square feet in town? Well, I made a, I made a video called one, uh, one Bedroom, One Million. I made it... Uh, uh, a while ago already, I think 2018, over a year ago, maybe a year and a half ago, and I was at the King West just down there, and I was saying, you know, one million, one, one bedroom, one million, and you know, we come into that point, um, but we're still a bit away from it because you know the 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 inflation has to catch up, the salaries have to catch up, the amount of money people have to catch up, and yes, Toronto is going to become exceptionally expensive so you have to be very cautious of what kind of unit you pick what kind of dollar per foot and what is the area giving you in terms of future renters or someone who's going to buy from you okay so the one thing future renter you know the reason they're going to rent from you is because they want to be in the area whether they like it there or they work there or whatever you know they have family there that's one thing uh, future buyer if they're going to live in a unit obviously they need to be in the area for some reason or if they're buying for investment, they need to make sure that they can make money on the unit. So there has to be enough margin for everyone to, to enjoy. So that's why you see the spill into uh, other areas, which before we wouldn't even look at them, but now they become completely legit, okay? So Midtown becomes legit, Uptown's become legit, Hamilton's become legit, uh, Guelph, Kitchener, Guelph, Kitchener, Waterloo becomes legit. Those are my hot areas outside of the city. And if, you're still, if I'm still staying at 416, uh, I'm starting to look again at resale because resale is cheaper now than uh, new construction. And you got to be watch that you can actually flip that new construction at $1,500 foot and someone will actually be able to buy from you and still make some kind of a money, make sense out of it. Okay, so that's it for today. Yossi Kaplan, any questions, please call me, email me, like the video, share the video, comment the video, help others see the video. Thank you very much. Talk to you soon. That's it.